Almost everyone in the United States at one time or another has traveled at least a stretch of old Route 66. It is one of the most famous highways in the world. This broken chain of concrete and asphalt has served as a source of inspiration for literature, music, drama, and a nation of dreamers. This is the road that opened the western part of the United States to the rest of the world. In all, it moved across more than 2,400 miles, three time zones, and eight states, touching the very heart of America. It would become one of the very first continuous spans of paved highway linking the east and west. It put us in touch with one another through its necklace of neon lights, Burma shave signs, curio shops, and motor courts. Just the name conjures up images of going somewhere. Those of us who truly love Route 66 prefer life on the mother road. We get off the turnpikes and interstates, slip onto Route 66, and return to the way America used to be. To know the story of the Mother Road, you must go back to the America of the Roaring Twenties, when we were between wars and on the wagon. Calvin Coolidge was president, and Henry Ford had just changed everyone's lives by lowering the price of his motor cars. So as motor travel began to stir the public's imagination, pressure was put on politicians to build a year-round practical highway that would link the country. But where to put the new highways? What cities would get the best roads? By 1925, the job of choosing the new highways went to a group of various state highway officials and others, which included an untiring Oklahoman named Cyrus Stevens Avery. Avery would eventually become known as the father of Route 66 for his dogged persistence in establishing what he felt was the perfect route joining the East and the West. The highway that connected two-thirds of the continent wound out of Chicago and traversed the gently rolling Illinois farmland. After it crossed the Mississippi River near St. Louis, 66 closely tracked the old Osage Indian Trail and the wire road as it cut across the Ozark Plateau of Missouri in a southwesterly direction. It briefly nipped a corner of Kansas before marching across the oil fields and ranch lands of Oklahoma. After reaching the Texas Panhandle, Route 66 sliced through Amarillo and then shot straight into the mountainous country of New Mexico. Beyond Albuquerque and Gallup, the highway moved through northern Arizona and the towns of Holbrook, Winslow, Flagstaff. It crossed the Colorado River and entered California at Needles and then snaked across the Great Mojave Desert of Southern California before reaching the Pacific Ocean at Santa Monica, west of Los Angeles. In all, it moved across more than 2,400 miles, three time zones and eight states, touching the very heart of America. It would become one of the very first continuous spans of paved highway linking the east and west. But more than that, Route 66 became a mirror held up to America. It put us in touch with one another through its necklace of neon lights, Burma shave signs, curio shops, and motor courts. Today, Route 66 means a time before America became generic, when motels didn't take reservations and doctors made house calls. Some things never change. Even in the modern year of jumbo jets, shopping malls, and super slabs, people are turning back to the past. Those of us who truly love Route 66 prefer life on the mother road. We get off the turnpikes and interstates, slip onto Route 66, and return to the way America used to be. Route 66 is only an unimproved two-lane with no curb and no shoulder as it cuts into Kansas, the third of eight states it will cross on its way to the Pacific shore. The center stripes have long ago faded here as the mother road makes its way across just a little more than 14 miles of the Sunflower State, country that turned into a bloody battleground in the late 1930s.
There are no monuments or markers here on this road on Route 66 in Kansas today. There's nothing to tell us about what happened here back in the turbulent 30s when this was bloody 66. The blood from miners was shed on this road as they went on strike. John L. Lewis was the head of their union and truckloads and carloads of labor scabs came up and down this road. They were from Missouri and Oklahoma and from right here in Kansas. And they went to battle against the company boys in front of the Eagle Pitcher Smelter, right into the town of Galena over that graceful sweeping bridge where nine of those men were gunned down in 1937 right in front of their union office. It was a terrible, terrible time. Time that we shouldn't forget. So maybe we don't need the official marker or the monument. Maybe the monuments here after all, right there in that two lane asphalt road. Route 66. There is a memorial to this Kansas town, however, the Galena Museum. The old train depot was moved to the edge of the highway, and Howard Litch and other local citizens began preserving memories of the old mines and the well-used highway the town still loves. These memories are their monument to 66.